going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Vile Files. I am your host, Nick, joined by Chrissy Alley and Amanda, the crack team. Crack team? <laughs> crack. Crackpot? Yeah. I don't know. They don't do crack. They just, what is it? What is it? What's the phrase? Crackpot? Cracker jacks? No, like, you know. Cracker like, jack? It's like, I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> We're keeping this the in The crack though. team. You know, <laughs> can, we, can we get new merch? Get the, uh, crack, the, team. crack team. <laughs> crack team. Crack they team. Crack team. To my knowledge, they don't. You know, Nick has always crack. said he wanted a fun name for his followers. Maybe we just found it. The crack team. Don't do drugs. Well, welcome, everyone. We have a great episode for you. Uh, the l- charming and lovely Matt King is with us. Uh, and uh, a real fun uh, conversation. We also learn a lot about Allie. And Amanda on this episode. <laughs> but and mostly Allie. Mostly Allie. <laughs> mostly Allie. Uh, yeah, I don't want to give anything away because um, it's just such a fun episode. If you are tuning in because you're a, a big fan of Matt, welcome. We are glad to have you. Uh, just a friendly reminder, we have uh, three episodes a week. This one, we're interview wonderful people like Matt. Also, a relationship and dating Q&A where people call in and ask questions, tell us about their stories, their lives, their problems, mostly relationship and dating focused. And yours truly will give them their two cents on what they're probably doing wrong. And and uh, we all learn a little bit about ourselves, our relationships. Uh, people seem to really love that episode. So check it out. And then if you like The Bachelor, we break it down uh, on a very detailed point by point to Monday morning quarterback style. So tune into that as well. It's It's after Bachelor in Paradise or yeah, I mean, Bachelor in Paradise, whenever... It's after Bachelor, you know, we're, we're, we're recapping Bachelor in Paradise right now. I don't know. Yeah. So when it's done airing for the week, we'll have a recap for you. Sex in the City updates. Where are you at? I'm currently, where I'm at is uh, Big and Carrie. Carrie just ran into Big at the in the Hamptons party, and he's dating uh, a younger than Carrie girl. I'm like definitive. I'm way behind. Okay. I'm like, they've... Mm-hmm. They've had that. They fucked on the first date already, but he's like, "I'm going to take you for dinner." The Chinese restaurant. Yes, yes. And he's like not the sure. The hidden if he's women. A, yeah, yes. Yeah. I love the fact that now our group text is not just like social media stuff, but it's Nick being like, "Can you believe that Big got Carrie a toothbrush, and it's the biggest monumental moment of their relationship?" <laughs> no, Carrie. No, yeah. It's like, I also, I have something to say about Sex in the City. Like, not to be a writer snob, but like, either the dialogue is off or the extra casting is off. What do you mean? Because there are some of the straightest actors in the world playing gay characters. There is like, just, if you watch, watch for like the extras, like the minor parts, the way they deliver their lines, something about it is wild to me. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, really deep in and how toxic Carrie is and the advice she gives to people. Yeah. She made a big deal. Like uh big, I don't know, gave her a toothbrush to have at her place. And she said it was like the most significant step in their relationship at this point. And I'm just thinking what, like do, do women like it's do like make that big of a deal about things that take no effort from men. Like to me, that was just like a sign of like what guys can do to like just appease someone. Like who, what, is it a big deal to have a toothbrush? And also because you have a toothbrush at their place, does that mean they can't have other toothbrushes? No, one of the guys, one of the guys whose place I went to, he had missler water. He had like a full setup. It was like a hotel. Like he had makeup remover. He had all these nice face washes. He had a toothbrush for me. For any of the ladies who might come. I suppose. Well, I was like, I was like, you either have sisters or like a recent ex. Cause like this is deep in like, you or, know what women need. Or... Or, or a current just, girlfriend. <laughs> or or he's just accommodating to guests that uh, frequent his bathroom. I do think there's a turning point in a like situationship when you have something of theirs, whether it's like like clothing that they left or like or a hat or something. I think that like to me, it gives me a sense of not it's like and it shouldn't, but like a sense of security where I'm like, okay, if you tried to ghost me, there's I have at least one like bargaining chip. And I've never actually used it, but I think about it. Like I, I clock it the first time a guy like leaves something at my place that I'm like, oh, okay, or a girl leaves something. Yeah. Uh, what I've realized about Sex and the City is Carrie is a pick me girl who is obsessed with the idea of things rather than the substance of things. Mm-hmm. 
and it's the uh, again i just want to thank carrie bradshaw for 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 having ask nick episodes because clearly based off of some of our mistakes that we make in life you know and and how we see things and the idea of things and what they mean or you know that really don't mean anything and take sometimes little effort from you know men or women and we give it so much value and she's obsessed with the idea of things rather than the substance of things. That's what I've realized. And you're that, blinded by it until yeah. you're not blinded by it anymore. Hmm. Carrie Bradshaw, not a role model. Not a role <laughs> model. Great episode for you. Uh, don't forget to review, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Only only five stars. Don't forget to send your questions at asknickacastmedia.com, cast with a K for Ask Nick episodes. And if there's nothing else, let's get to Matt. Matt, welcome. Thank you. We Nick. were in the middle of talking about birthdays. Yes, and it's your assistant's birthday, and you didn't it's know. Allie's birthday. I did not. <laughs> Why do you have to call me? Unbelievable. Nobody in this room knew. I mean, no one knew. I feel Shame. like it's. Uh, Shame. I feel like I'm gonna first blame Chrissy, my producer. I feel like you have to <laughs> produce like birthday announcements, and then I'm gonna blame my manager next. And then I'm going to blame my other assistant, Amanda, who talks to Allie on a daily basis. And then I'm going to blame me. I think you can blame me. Put it, it on first. me. <laughs> but I, I will say I did. I, I noticed that Allie got a little dressed up today. And then I was like, what's there's something. I feel like I told you about something going on. I found yours on Facebook and then I warned Nick ahead of time that it was oh. going to be your, her birthday. I was like, just a reminder. Did, what, did you have a birthday? Did I miss that? Like no, you, it was like the first week I was working oh, I for you, you. And you texted me a meme, birthday. like a gift. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is the most like emotion I've seen in a text from you. So she started on her first week. It was your birthday? It was like my first month. Yeah, and I had to keep oh, well, it professional. Like, I, you know, we had, it's important to set boundaries in our work. You know, relationship. <laughs> that's right. So. You know. But I thought for her, since she started in January, I'm like, oh, okay, well. Wait, what month is it? It's August. You yeah. should have known it was. I'm a not the by Yeah, now. listen, I uh, I'm not the perfect boss. It's okay. None of us are <laughs> the perfect by bosses. Allie, happy birthday! And you were you wish? Do you do you do you text your friends? Do you text your acquaintances happy birthday, or do you reply via like if it's a, if you get a Facebook notification? I don't do the Facebook wall thing. I'll usually will send a text. And lately, I've been trying to get better about wishing people happy birthdays because I used to be like, eh, everybody has a birthday. You either catch it or you don't. But lately, I think it's great for the cer certain people in your life who you really appreciate their existence and you don't see them enough, maybe you don't talk to them enough, that's when I send like a really good birthday message. Like last night it was my friend Matt's birthday and I sent him a really good one. I like, I really sat you, down. What'd you say? You like, oh, you sat down, you I, wrote him. Well, I was in bed, I was already kind of laying down, but I really wanted to let him know how much I appreciate him. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, should I read it? Yeah, I, I mean, sure. <laughs> I'm a, I mean, I feel terrible. I'm, not, I'm like, happy B-Day, bud. That's. Yeah. I see, I do that for like my close friends that I see every day, but the people yeah. I don't see pretty often, you know, I try to. Let them know. How much I appreciate them. Wow. Yeah. I can't wait for my birthday and your when message. It, wait, your birthday's in November? September. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's all right. Natalie's birthday is coming up and it's, uh, I've, it's pretty clear that it's important to her. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like it's the job of a person. I, I don't, I'm not saying this at Allie, but like to like sort of let people in their lives know the standard for which they expect. Oh, so we're going to blame birthday. Allie for this. No, I just mean, I feel like I told, I feel like I did, when Allie, I was like, it's my birthday and I feel so weird because like I haven't been working in this job so long. Yeah. Right. Like I definitely like talk to Allie about it. Do you know what I mean? Like you have to like tell people if you want a big birthday. I was pretty proud of the birthday I threw my girlfriend Patricia this year. It, dude, it was really great. You want to hear it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So it was, we did a decades back in time party. So like the party was like kind of a three stop pub crawl, but at friends apartments, but we did it by like the decade. So we started off and it was the nineties and we only played like nineties music, had nineties decorations. And then we went to her other friend's place and it was the eighties. And then we went like on a party bus to her other friend's house and it was the seventies. So we got to go like back in time. That is the best idea ever. Thank you. God. Thank you. Do you want to help me plan Natalie's birthday? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Totally, man. Yeah. Are you coming? Next like, because we were going to go to Third Street. <laughs> go to Jones on Third. Um, <laughs> and to Craig's. <laughs> it's coming up. And um, I'm always happy to bounce I have ideas some, off of it. I have some anxiety about it. 
Because I I'm not a big birthday guy. I've never been a big birthday guy. Right. I it uh, it feels uncomfortable to celebrate myself. I, I feel you. Yeah. I, that's why I would like to do birthdays with my like extended family, like all my relatives and stuff, because I don't want to stress out about it while I'm here in L.A. Because you have so many different friends groups. Some people might show up. Too many people show up and you have to entertain all these different people. I like to keep it with the family. Yeah. yeah. Also being sung happy birthday to is the worst. Uh, Ooh. I've gotten the better worst. at it. Do I used to hate with, it. Now I'm like, come on. Do you go <laughs> no. with the happy birthday or a happy birthday to? Do you have you heard that yeah. version? Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Is that the Stevie, Stevie Wonder. Wonder version? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a good one. You know, like the happy birthday song is apparently like written wrong in terms of like the composition of music. Like it's it falls off. Like it's like happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Da, da, da. Happy birthday. So you, it's really bad, but a guy like recomposed it and made it sound so much more beautiful. Like there's two notes that should be switched instead of going down. So like anyone up. who like understands music wouldn't understand what you're saying. Yeah, I don't understand music, <laughs> but I like to listen to people who do understand music. Um, well, I'm glad to have you here, Matt. Uh, I, I got to know Matt. Uh, well, we've been friends. I like to call us friends. Yes, for, we're friends now. I don't know, month and a half. Uh, our our girlfriends are friends. Yes, they know each other. Uh, they know each other. And then you came over for a small get together and I loaned you a pair of my uh, swimsuit. Which is the kindest trunks. thing you can do to like another man coming over to your house. You just met him. You offered yeah. your swimsuits. He gave me two swimsuits and I got to pick. I you gave me choices. Option. Because, you know, when I wear a swimsuit, it's just me in the suit. And then I, I loaned that to you. There's no. But let me just say. Like, it's not like loaning pants. <laughs> These were very yeah. like Nick Vial swimsuits though. Like I got like pretty skinny chicken legs. These were like suits you would wear to like, I don't know, like a, like a club party, like in Vegas kind of swimsuits. Like his physique compliments the swimsuits. Didn't compliment my physique, but luckily there was only like six or seven, seven people, people there. there. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I, uh, I, I found you uh, to be delightful and, and I learned more about you and I wanted to have you come on and, and chat about life and love and relationships and friendships. Before we get into all of that, uh, I had my crack research team do some digging on your life and I found out that you were the Neotoc national champion in 2010 a, a, you're a great orator. You were great at giving speeches, public speaking. <laughs> yes. And I have so many questions about that. To clarify, <laughs> this is speech, like public speaking, not debate. Yeah, so like a speech and debate team, there's the speech team. The debate team, they're like arguing politics, doing cross-examination and all of that. That's speech, not you. No. Speech is, um, there's like different categories. There's like public address speeches, ones that you have written and prepared and memorized about a certain topic that you're passionate about. That's what like I did. There's like interp where you do like competitive acting. And, you were a uh, national champion. National champion of the NIETOC uh, when I was in high school, my senior year of high school. That's really cool. Thank you. What, I mean, <laughs> what was your speech on? So did you ever have a fear? You know, like people say, I'd rather die than have oh. you know public speaking. Did you have to overcome a fear or you're just like, I like talking in front of an audience? Yes, I definitely had a huge fear of public speaking. And the way I kind of got into speaking speech was because um, when we were going from like middle school theater to high school theater, our high school theater department was really big about you doing competitive speech and like competitive acting because it makes you a stronger performer because every weekend you're having to go to tournaments, you're performing for large groups of people, you're being judged, you're receiving criticism, you're getting placed. And with that, every round is an audition. And so you kind of get this uh, bug in you to be more confident and to be more, um, I don't know, open with your performance and your choices and stuff. So we would do that on the weekends as theater kids and then you stumble into public address and speech. So I hated it in the beginning. I was terrified. I never liked going to the tournaments. And then I won one tournament my sophomore champion. year and I got the bug and I loved going to the tournaments because you could like meet all these kids from other schools. You could meet like girls and like talk to them. Like that was like your competition you get to flirt in the cafeteria and eat donuts and monster energy drinks and just chat i loved it what, what how how does one win one wins by going making it to finals after getting like eliminated by placing in the top two out of like eight people in prelims and semis 
and then you have like a huge panel of judges and uh they rank you in- but like on what like for me i you know podcasting i talk but i i i have a lot of wasted words i use the word like a lot or, i still um, struggle with you, like do you do that yes. or like are, are you allowed to do that in a speech that you're like no you shouldn't do that in a speech well, how do you practice not doing it you just write it you memorize it and you memorize it without saying the ums oh is I it mean, a teleprompter or are you uh, it's not, no it's not I don't newscasting know. no no I'm, I'm just giving you a hard time no it's uh is there just, banging on the table where you're giving a speech? that's in like <laughs> cx and like debate and stuff i wish we could do that but no you're just getting up you kind of have your three points you walk to each spot and deliver it. Hey, it's still summer. Make sure you're enjoying it with your favorite summer drink. And I'm talking about Huzzah, the refreshing seltzer with benefits. Living your best life never tasted so good. Make sure you're staying hydrated, but also getting that probiotic seltzer into your body because few things are more important than your gut health because it helps with your immune system, your skin. I mean, your, they say your gut is your second brain. It could it can help with your mood. Stay hydrated, stay refreshed, drink Huzzah, and take care of your gut health with Huzzah Probiotic. Has some great flavors. Raspberry lemon's my favorite. They also have strawberry hibiscus, juicy pear. Uh, I could go on and on how delicious it is. I, I have it in my fridge. It's like uh, everyone comes over. They're like, do you still have Huzzah? I'm like, of course. So like, if you want to like entertain your friends and, and be the life of the party, stock Huzzah in your fridge. The coolest part about Huzzah, it's uh, every can they have is less than three grams, is three grams, is three grams of sugar or less and less uh, 15 calories or less. Can't beat that. Put an exclamation point in your summer with Huzzah. Stock up with 20% off. When you use code V-I-A-L-L at drinkhuzzah.com, that's code V-I-A-L-L for 20% off your drink. That's code V-I-A-L-L for 20% off at drinkhuzzah, H-U-Z-Z-A-H.com. DoorDash, hey, I mean, you know them, you love them. Get the food when you want it. Use DoorDash. I'm a, I'm a DoorDash customer multiple times a week. Uh, I think I use DoorDash, honestly, cereal. Cereal is my late night dessert I like going to. So like, you know, sometimes I'll uh, I'll, uh, I'll get the munchies and I'll want some cereal and uh, I use DoorDash and it makes it super easy and convenient. I eat it's so usually Cocoa Pebbles or Frosted Mini Wheats and some milk. Also <laughs> my favorite Chinese food. I mean, really the list goes on. Uh, uh, but they have, ama- you know, the point is they have some of the, they have the nicest restaurants all the way to like cereal. And DoorDash makes it easy. It's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, you might be making pancakes and you need that vanilla. And you forgot it. So go to DoorDash. Have them bring the vanilla so you, you can still make it and not have to miss any key ingredients. You know, sometimes I made meatballs the other day and I forgot to buy an onion. Bam, DoorDash. With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood's go-to or, uh, and also the great thing about, you know, DoorDash is like, you know, keeping people working during the pandemic and supporting your local restaurants, uh, all while satisfying your cravings. For a limited time, our listeners can get 24, 25% off in zero delivery freeze on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code V-I-A-L-L. That's 25% off up to $10, up to $10 value. And zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code V-I-A-L-L. Don't forget, that's code V-I-A-L-L for 20% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject subject to change, terms apply. Do you find that skill to be useful in life to this day? Yes, completely. I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for doing like speech and theater and stuff in high school. But I still struggle with it. Like sometimes I hate listening to myself doing a podcast. I still kind of like freak out in moments like this when I'm talking. Like I even when I got to college, I was still so scared to talk to people because I was so used to talking to people that I just like spent all my time around. Like realizing you have to now communicate with people who may become your friend, may not be your friend, people that can take you to further places in your life and career wise. It was like a whole new level of talking and I struggled with that Do you and I got over it, I guess. Do you feel like it helped make you a good friend maker? Like it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, my friends always give me a hard time. They're like, Matt, you know, like everybody, like I just have different friend groups, not like I know everyone there is to know it's just there's a lot of people in my life that i have because i guess through 
my way of talking. I don't know. You're approachable. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I like to, I think everybody is like an open book and I find people really interesting. So I, and I'm kind of just like a no bullshit person. So do you find everyone interesting? No, not really. It all depends on what somebody like has to offer in a conversation. Well, that's how I am. And it's a bad habit I have where it's just like, I'm like, I'm not interested. And then I'll like uh, zone out. But I feel like you are better at at least I yeah pretending or I, oh, I finding hate something. Dead space. I hate dead space. Okay. I like I think I operate in, ter- in terms of conversation based out of like anxiety and just being like, well, th- let's just get through this because by me participating in the conversation, getting this person involved makes me feel less like I don't want to be here. People don't want me here. Huh? That's how I kind of see it. I wish I had that. I'm the opposite. I have the same anxiety, but I'll just like look you're at tough. you. Like, yeah. You're tough. You're You have qualities I wish I had. Like when we were recording my podcast, we had both of our girlfriends in the room listening and watching. And it's not like this where it's like a pretty big room and they're sitting over there. They were right up close and I was stressing out the entire time because I felt like our banter wasn't um, kind of in the right groove or I wasn't in the right mindset because they were right there. And I was too nervous to tell our girlfriends to leave the room. And I was like, I can tell, but finally you did. Yeah. And you were like, (laughs) do people think you're like, do people, uh, what did you ask me? You said, I, I, what I, what are you a polite person? I'm like, are you really polite? I said, I I like to think so. And he goes, well, I can tell because if that was on my podcast and they were in, I would just be like, get out. Well, I, yeah. I mean, I would, just, cause I could tell you were like, you, I could tell you kept looking at them the whole time. Mm-hmm. And I just know that if it would have bothered me early on, I would have been like, Hey, do you mind like leaving? I'm and a people pleaser. It took I you got like a 45 minutes. minutes. Yeah. And especially when it's your girlfriend and like your girlfriend, I was like, I don't want any of this to, I don't know carry over till after the podcast but yeah no it's funny because i i uh like i know people like it if i'm blunt or i oh, yeah, love your honesty but like sometimes it doesn't always serve me well like especially i'm like hey can you get out and you know you're right and then sometimes i i'm 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 a little too abrupt and then it it, it burns me but i think this is good now that we're starting our friendship is these qualities are going to rub off onto one another so i'll be coming a little i'll get a little bit more tough you'll get a little bit more opening your conversation there we go it's a win-win so you've been with patricia for how long a year and eight months we, we our anniversary is january 3rd so it's pretty easy math january 3rd why is that easy math because it's it's january 3rd it's oh it's like one. the beginning yeah. of the year so yeah. you just kind of look <laughs> at the date and subtract <laughs> three days <laughs> shut up amanda <laughs> no it's okay i yeah. get it yeah. math is hard yeah before you met patricia we don't have to get into the relationship itself, but I, you, you, you've been heartbroken. Before. Oh my gosh. Yeah, completely. Why were you heartbroken? And more specifically, we always get a lot of questions about dealing with heartbreak. And I always will like give my point of view, but from, you know, you're happily in love now. When I met you, I thought to myself, this couldn't be a guy who's ever not been in love with anyone else, but his current girlfriend. But obviously right. that's not reality. Uh, how did you yourself get over the heartbreak and then what helped you get ready to move on? And did, were you single for a while? Like what was that process like between kind of healing from the past relationship to meeting your current girlfriend? So I think what's so crazy about heartbreak is like obviously looking back and seeing how far you've come. And it is so wild thinking back onto when you do have your heart broken, you really truly feel like you're at the lowest of the low and lo- there is no light at the end of the tunnel. And that um, this is as good as it's going to get is you being alone. And now looking back, I'm just like, wow, I'm a completely different person. And that's so crazy that you could be in that dark of a place. So I guess the first thing is like, you're not alone. And P- everyone tells you it gets better, it gets better, it does. Um, but I guess how that journey went is realizing I needed to first like love myself because you had put so much energy and so much time into another person and realizing that it didn't pay off and it didn't work out um, is a tough thing to like stomach and accept. And it's okay to be upset. That was a big thing that I had to learn was like, one, it's okay to feel heartbroken. It's okay to be upset. Um, but most importantly, it's important to like love yourself. And then um, 
getting into finding out who you really are again, getting into your hobbies, getting into taking all the trips and vacations and chasing your curiosities to wherever they want to take you, falling in love with your creative work and um, in spending time with your friends and making your own friend circle. And that's really what I did kind of like post Vine coming into like my YouTube friends and stuff. We just really immersed ourselves in our work our senses of humor and that kind of got me onto a different level of uh with my career and then yeah oh, okay okay so you're just uh, how big is this question are, are we doing how, as the big full? as you want as big as you want to make and, it and then in the process of that also getting yourself back on the on you to your two feet you know kind of realizing you're in a now different mindset where you're not um constantly thinking about this other person you're now open to kind of dating and seeing other people and test driving other cars and figuring out what works, realizing what you really want and what you're looking for is very important because a lot of times I think people immediately want to hop into something because they just miss intimacy. They just miss having somebody. They just miss the routine of a relationship. And sometimes the time that you're single is sometimes the best times to really fall back in love with yourself. Noom shavings make a pile whatever your fitness or wellness goals are help achieve those goals with Noom Noom's cognitive behavioral approach focuses on why instead of what to help you change your relationship with food everybody's journey is different Noom customizes the program for you based on personal goals 80% of Noom users finish the program and over 60% have stuck with their goals for at least a year that is the key because this is not diets people this is a way of life and Noom is like I said is helping you do that it's an easy to use app on your phone in really 10 minutes a day you can make drastic changes in your uh, your uh, wellness goals Noom fits into your life on your terms. No grueling early mornings or huge chunks out of your day. Start building better habits for healthier long-term results. Sign up for your trial at noom.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That's N-O-O-M.com slash V-I-A-L-L. What is one thing that while you're going through the healing process that you're, you know, you sound like a reflective of man. One thing that you thought you were doing right in your past relationship that you've realized I don't want to bring that into my current relationship like something you learned about yourself or kind of misplaced effort or something you thought you, you know we should do this and this is what love means and then you realize that I shouldn't I shouldn't be doing that or I don't want to do that I guess like looking back I would say really giving your partner the um space to grow on their own. I think with my past relationship, there was a pretty big like age difference. And, you know, when you're older, especially like with you and your relationship, you know, there is like a bit of an age difference. You see so much of your younger self in them and you want to kind of offer that advice and guide them better because you've been through it all. Sometimes it's best just to let that person experience things as they come and you can't really be their coach or mentor like through whatever they're going through. So I think giving your partner just a little bit more breathing room as they discover things and not be too much of like a um, I don't know, like a hovering teacher of wisdom just because you're older. Yeah, it's, it's, so. it's a fine line between, you know, regardless of even age difference, you know, people are, are like, oh, you know, you help your partner be the, your better, their better self. And and then how, where do you draw the line between like giving your two cents or, or listening? And I think guys have a struggle with that too, where it's just like we tend to want to be problem solvers and and that's something i've always struggled with is just like i think my girlfriend just wants to vent and i think i'm pretty sure i'm just supposed to listen right and just agree as <sighs> opposed to being like and i, I mean I'll, I'll always struggle with that and even now has been like i'm not like interested in in what you have to say like i just you know it's like sometimes i just want to talk shit you yeah know? or and I, you know and it's in a safe circle between like she's not like talking shit and she's really not a gossip at all but like i i sometimes i just need to listen yeah and, and that's kind of the sexier yeah. approach you can have with it because it's not very sexy to just like be like well oh, 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 well you need to do this have you done this today because this will take you further in your career if you do that and that's just not what they need they don't need really a life coach they just need like a good life partner yeah. to make them you know feel absolved and validated and heard when you met patricia 
uh, were you fully over and healed from your relationship? And, and what was it about her that made you realize, like, I want to actually commit to this relationship or invest my time as opposed to, you know, just a, a girl I'm dating, you know, and maybe I'll just keep looking. Healed, certainly not. But getting ready, kind of. Because when I saw her, was I was at a party. It was like a watch party at an Airbnb. A bunch of UT people were there and a bunch of Alabama people were there watching a game. And I saw her from across the party. And dude, I know nothing about sports at all. It's one of my biggest weaknesses. Um, but I saw Patricia there, you know, this gorgeous blonde blue eyed girl with big lips and this raspy voice and a huge personality and amazing smile, just schooling these guys talking about sports. They were like, she was like, well, you're a player. You guys should have traded this. And when you guys had that coach, you were on a losing streak in that game. And I was watching her and I'm like, who is this chick? And it's kind of like sexy when somebody knows a lot about something that you know nothing about. So I was pretty attracted to that, but I couldn't get myself to like really get her number and talk to her. I just went up to her at the end of the party when I was leaving and I was just saying, I think you're just like the cutest thing in the world. Um, my name's Matt, but I got to go right now. And she was like, who the hell oh, are you? That's pretty good. I don't know if I've ever done something like that smooth. Uh, well, cause like it was, I, we, my, the Uber was there it, and I had no time to spare. So it was the out that helped, did the, like knowing you had to get in the cab help, Yes. Because you know you couldn't linger. I just linger. wanted to shoot my shot. I think that like, helps, I right? Yeah. Because I, I didn't know if I was going to run into her again. No, I've done that twice on two separate occasions. As the Uber pulled up one time, I was in a frat house and this guy was really hot and he was talking to a couple other girls and I just walked straight up to him and I was like, are you going to help me win this bet with my friends? And he was like, what's the bet? And I was like, that you kiss me before I leave. Ooh. Ooh. Kiss me and then I ran in the Uber. And then another time I was at a party and my friend was Wait, driving Did you home. exchange information? No, not at all. That wasn't what it was about. I just thought he was okay. hot. <laughs> um, and there's a reason why my roommates called me balls for like a whole year. Um, and then <laughs> I will not ever refer to you as that. <laughs> um, and then I did it at a party recently and my friend was driving and she was like, we got to go. And it was the same. I was like, it's a now or never decision. And then I went up to that guy and I was like, are you single? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, great. Want to go on a date? Damn. Yeah. Forward. Mm -hmm. I, I like, yeah, I guess, yeah, I like that. Have, have the exit strategy so you don't like uncomfortably linger. Yeah. Be like, hi. Uh, That's when it's like an Uber pool. <laughs> <laughs> and they're in the same yeah. pool. <laughs> as embarrassing as that was, she has no memory of me doing that until I saw her again a month later at a party. And like I followed her on Instagram, we like talked and stuff and I wasn't really ready to like pursue her. But every time I'd see her on Instagram, I was like, damn, that Patricia girl is like such a catch. She is like a really good one, but I wasn't ready for it. I was still enjoying being single. And then I saw her at a bar with another guy and I saw that she kissed him and I was like devastated. I was, I, 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 I looked to my buddy, Mike, I'm like that Patricia girl is with another guy. And then I went up to one of her friends and I asked, is that Patricia's boyfriend? And they said, no, she's just like on a date. She's just been talking to him. And I was like, okay. Sent her a text the next morning, at, invited her to brunch and she came. And you then invited, it was- Your first date was a brunch. Oh yeah. It was a brunch just date. Just the two of you or no, with friends? me and like five other guys. And I wanted to see if she could hang. And she could. She really could. I think, do women do that as much as guys? Because I do, like I, Natalie, I when I met her, I quickly invited her out with friends because I, I just kind of wanted to see how she could hang. Do women do that often if they have the opportunity right away? I do it with my roommate a lot because she is fantastic. She is not particularly accommodating as people expect women to be. And so she'll just be very like not rude, but very direct with men. And they freak out every time or not freak out, but it's very unnerving for them. So they have to pass like the roommate test, though, if they get along with her, it's a good thing. Or you definitely want to see them interact. I just want to see their dynamic. Like she told one man to his face. She was like, I think that's an emotional manipulation tactic one time when we were like hanging out with him. And she was, was right. She was right. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, he was like being really self-deprecating in a way that was like meant to like sort of set the cont contextualize him. This is like, like Aunt Lindsay or whatever Katie's. <laughs> no, aunt not is, like or... that at all. Because she's very, because like she's very fun and she's not cruel, but she's just like direct. So uh, Katie's aunt is. Cruel. I feel like maybe women and correct me if I'm wrong here, but like I feel like maybe they have one or two friends that they're more likely to try it out with as opposed to like a huge group yeah. setting. Right. 
Amanda's the best person to do anything with. Like if you're going out or talking to a guy, she's the most like Amanda. What? Oh, it was when we were with the Italian boys and they were all speaking different languages and I don't speak a different language very well. And Amanda was like, great. It's like, let's go around and like was trying to like involve me in it. And she was like, so like, I'll say it in German. You say it in Italian. And then Allie can do it in a Minnesotan accent. <laughs> she like found a way to involve me in this game. And I was like, you're a great wing woman. Thank you. Yeah. Hmm. So brunch. I'm older. So, yeah. I feel so old after hearing that. Like I just am like, hey, come hang out with my friends, and if you can get along with our sense of humor, cool. Chrissy's just sending <laughs> nudes. Be like, I'll be. Here. Well, spi- you know, the Spice Girls once said, you know, if you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. There you go. You know, so <laughs> yeah, that's what's important. Is that what you text Patricia as you invited her to brunch? No, <laughs> if you want to be my lover, no you got to get with my friends. If someone texted me that, I'd be like, I'm in. Yeah, <laughs> I actually think that would be a great. It would be great, a great like great slide line. into the DM. I, I'm still trying to play it cool. I didn't want to freak her out with just putting lover already into it and putting that in her head. But I kept asking her out like every week for dinner, and she kept saying yes. But it wasn't that good in the beginning. Like, what do you mean? The first date I took her on, she didn't ask me any questions. Not like one question, <laughs> dude. That's a red flag. I yeah. know that's not great. I what kept did, you. Because I knew she had a heart of gold and I knew she was just being shy and like worried because she wasn't that interested in me. She really wasn't. But her friends were like, Matt's a good guy. You should give him a shot. And I just wanted to show that to her that I was interested. And dude, I was doing the craziest things to get Patricia to like me. So you know how she loves sports. And whenever there was a big uh, Auburn game coming up, I would just look up an article about the game uh, you know, like some sports analysts saying how they think the game's going to go. I would copy just a paragraph from the article and like reword it in my own words and send it to her. And so she really thought that I knew so much about Auburn football, all about it. the quarterback, the coach, everything. And I knew nothing. And I would keep copying and pasting every little paragraph to keep the conversation going. And eventually she caught on was uh, and thinking like, Google's a pretty good tool. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So when did she start asking you questions? She started asking me questions when she finally asked me a question uh, during one of our dates. And I'm like, oh, wow. You asked me a question. And then... Did you you actually call her out? Yes, I did. And then she was like smiling and like laughed it off. And then I was kind of worried I said that because I was like, well, that maybe wasn't a good joke to land in because maybe I made her really nervous and put her off spot. And then... Ever since that, it's been nothing but questions. But to open up the floodgate, she had never been though. I think in like she has never really been like I think in a long term relationship, and I think she just wasn't used to like I don't know. Yeah, people go to reciprocate at different speeds. Yeah, things like Natalie will joke all the time. She's like, "Remember when I was really shy? I never talked around you." I'm like, "I know, it's a good day." No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> she's actually, I mean, I love that. Um, it's it's just a funny joke. But yes, people. Go slower, and I know, she, like, I don't know, maybe, yeah, maybe Patricia was more I, nervous, or I really should have t- taken it as a red flag because it I think anybody red would. Flag, yeah. But there was some draw that I just had to her that I couldn't shake or get off my mind, and I'm you, really happy I stuck with you it. You make an interesting point because it's definitely a red flag overall. Like, if anyone asked me, you know, like, they didn't ask questions. I'd be like, oh, red flag. But you have to account for nervousness and, and you know, politeness or, or whatever, you know, they're, and, and that's why people, like, should be open, I guess, to second or third dates because you, you know, there is a anxiety or nerves on a first date. It's hard to be like, I'm going to, you know, people will say, like, be yourself. And it's just like, how do I do that on, yeah. on, on a first or second date? Um Hmm. And now everyone, you're just totally in love. Oh, I love her. How, I love her so much. You know, one question, especially as you mentioned, because when you first met her, you weren't like totally healed and, and, and from the past relationship and that there's all, there's, often those lines blur, right? When did you at all felt comfortable enough to talk to Patricia, if, if, if you did at all, about like your past relationship? Because, you know, you, you don't want to like do that early on. You don't want to be like, I'm talking about your past relationship. But at some point, it's just nice to, you know, know where you came from or what you've dealt with. Uh, oh, uh, like- I remember. I, re- I remember the first time she ever asked about it. It was during like one of our like third or fourth dates. We were getting sushi and she just wanted to know the story of like what happened. And that was like kind of 
I don't know. It was like a very vulnerable moment where you're like, like you kind of have to like, unload your Do I really your go here? Yeah. Yeah. But then also, you know the facts and, you know, you're the one whose heart was broken. So and you don't you don't want to sound like you're still caught up yeah, in it. Yeah. But at the same time that you're like, I'm a pretty loyal person. So having experienced this, I would never do this kind of a thing. She handled it well. Yeah, she's handled it really well. I mean, we still kind of grow with it. Totally understand. Yeah. Obviously, your friends are important to you. You have a, a tight uh, group of a friend circle. Uh, and your friend, David Dobrik, obviously was in the news uh, and he's uh, acknowledged and apologized. And the question I have for you when it comes to like friendship you know, sometimes people like what makes a good friend? How do you, you know, be there for your friends? But at the same time, like I always talk about like being a real friend is sometimes, you know, holding your friends accountable and, and being there to say, mm, you know, like you can you can do better. What was that situation? What was that situation like for you as a friend to David? And, and how do you feel about like, you know, how did you support your friend while at the same time, you know, having any tough conversations with him? A lot of us were like very confused and very disappointed, um, you know, and not only David, but all the other people that were involved. Um, and it was a really tough place because you're angry, you're disappointed, you're confused because there's a lot of everyone has a different story about what's going on. And at the same time, you know, you have to believe um, who's ever bringing this story forward. I think, you know, it, it came in waves and I'm entirely honest where you're angry and then you're disappointed and then you kind of go into a place of distance. I gave David plenty of space and time for him to reflect on how he was going to deal with that. Um, and I think he did a really great job in terms of uh, telling people that he really missed the mark and that he will continue to do better and be better. And I believe him straight up. Um, I think my biggest concern during that time was just making sure that David's like mental health was going to be fine, you know, because mm -hmm. his whole work is his creative energy and his mind. And at the same time, though, David has like his real close knit of people in the group because our group is massive. Um, and I'm kind of like, on the outer rim in terms of like the people who spend their close day to day sure. with him. Um, but he had a really great support group um, with people around him. And every time I saw him and I was just like, I just want to make sure you're OK, you know, like you, everything going good upstairs because you can get some pretty dark places during times like that. But still at the same time, you know, some serious issues needed to be handled. And um, he continues to get better every single day. And I'm very proud of him. Um, but yeah, still at the same time, very disappointed in the situation. Uh, but yeah, I think just the main thing is like holding your friends accountable, having those conversations. And that was a big thing is like having these types of talks, you know, separate from David's issue. But how do we um, plan for things like this? And mainly how do we prevent and also why it's important to never put ourselves in situations like this again, because it not only affects you know, the people involved that affects everyone on the outer rim who's associated with your creative group. Totally. If that makes any sense. Yeah, totally. And it was like a teach, like you said, kind of almost like a teachable moment for, for you guys or you specifically about, you know, whether, you know, how can, you know, how did David get in this situation? What can I learn from it? You know, um, and I don't know all the details. Obviously, I'm aware of the overall situation, but um, I guess we can always just try to learn not only for our, from our mistakes, but from the people around us. Definitely, definitely. It certainly has made our group a lot stronger than it has before. Do you, you, you mentioned you have a lot of different friend groups. Uh, I, I, I do as well. Like what, what are, how do you pick friends uh, in terms of, you know, I think nowadays, I think making friends, especially in adult life, you know, you're your mid twenties, you know, out of you know high school, college, easier to make friends. Uh, making friends in adult life is a little different. Do you have a certain kind of in your mind, like a, you know, we have a, our list of when we're dating, but in terms of like making friends, is that something that's still important to you to keep expanding like, your circle of influence? And how do you go about doing that? Um, I guess like yes, I have so many friend groups you know i have you your internet friends and then you have friends from college and then you just have friends through friends that you've made out here um and it's tough certainly to balance all of them um but i think one of the best things is is when certain friends really start shining out to you the more and more you get to know them and you realize that's your favorite person in the group 
in a way and also realizing at the same time you can be the host of your own party in your own social group i used to have like a really tough issue with being like i have to go hang out with this group i have to go hang out with this group and i can't hang out with them at the same time and then i need to go hang out with this one when you can kind of like invite the people you want to be around you i think is really important in honoring those people i think in my favorite type of friends i think are the people who there's a mutual sense of like respect and excitement for one another and whatever you're doing in life. Cause in our group, everybody is on like different pages with like their success and what they want in terms of like getting content and wherever they're at in life. I don't know, hold on. I'm kind of like in a mess right now thinking about how to answer that question. I, I think you're, I think that was all great. Oh, okay. Are you over? No, 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 I'm not. Are you an overthinker? It. I try not to, I've been meditating a lot, but. You have? Yeah. How long have you been doing that for? Mm, three or four weeks, oh. but I'll probably give up on it in like, I don't know, another three or four weeks and then I'll get back into I like, it. I, I, I'm such an advocate for it. I definitely don't do it a, a ton or like things like yoga or meditation. Um, Therapy is the one thing I've really stuck with when I started. Um, but meditating is it's just, it's really hard for, for me to, to do. I haven't seen my therapist in a while and I'm debating on getting back into it because... But uh, do, who, do you have a therapist? Yeah, Darlene. Darlene. So yeah. you have a woman? Mm -hmm. Do you like it? Yeah. I think I need a man. Why? And this isn't about, this is, Why? I'm not trying to make this a gender thing. <laughs> I realized with my last therapist, I kind of had this like maternal instinct with her where I just wanted to feel comforted by her or I just felt like I was just chatting and gossiping with her about <laughs> something. And I feel like I really need a man to be like, Matt, think... buck up, get with it. Like, this is silly. Well, Darlene will like go shoot me straight for sure. Okay. And maybe I need to check out Darlene. Darlene, what's her name? I don't know. That's I don't, not legal. I don't think I can Oh, you can't say? You I don't can't know. say? Honestly, That's I don't even true. know her last name. I, I've listened to podcasts where they've said their uh, therapist's name. I don't name. think she would mind it. I said, eventually, I'll have Darlene on the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just definitely. do therapy for the pod I, I don't think that's legal actually I don't think she'd be allowed to even yeah. if I consented yeah yeah interesting yeah but I think well whether man or woman I think therapy you, you just need to feel comfortable and get value out of it it's like you know going to a mechanic or a doctor or whatever or hire you know you, you need to not everyone's created equal you have to have a good match it's therapy you have to be comfortable talking and you mean you might need to get something out of therapy different than what i might need to get out of it oh you know but i've never um yeah i i just was referred to darlene and so it i had no necessarily preference man or or, or woman uh um, and it's helped yeah it's it helps level me out for at first we started doing like once a week and then it was like she's like i think you're good but like let's just i'll like check in every other week it's kind of uh it's like maintenance and then if I feel like I need to like unload on something, like or, if something's bugging me and like, I've just really irritated, like it's like first, you know, you know, Natalie lives there. Right. So I'll, she's always the first to hear my anxiety. And then, you know, Chris, you might get a, a call or whatever, but I feel like I've exhausted, like, it's like, okay, I need to like deal with this rather than like just vent to someone. And, and, then, and it's someone yeah. who is, you know, so private and removed from your personal yeah, life. They give a They're shit. not yeah. going to tell anybody. It's yeah. such a release. Like, like literally legally not allowed to. Oh yeah. yeah. That's great. I love it. Yeah. I know that's, that's why I want to get back into it is just have somebody to, you know, unload to that doesn't carry that out into any of my like personal relationships or friends or anything. It's kind of no. nice. Uh, you have a lot of successful friends, uh, especially successful friends at a young age. You're successful yourself. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever get jealous or do you consider yourself a jealous person? And how do you uh, make sure that or do you uh, use your friend's success to elevate you rather than um, trigger you? Because I think we all like to be, you know, build our friends up and root for their success. But like, if you're honest and you're human, it's not always easy to do. Like sometimes, you know, it's just like, yeah, you know, like I could do a better job, but like, I'm really happy for yeah. you, but like also fuck off. <laughs> um, no, it's really hard being 29. And then some of your friends in your friend group are like 23 and 20, for and they have like Lamborghinis and they're making, you know, millions and millions of dollars a year. Um, definitely I've had moments of like jealousy, but lately as I've gotten older, I'm never really jealous over 
uh, I don't know, material things, nor even like success number wise on how much clout you have. I'm mostly jealous of people who are successful and I think are like genuinely like happy. Like you can mm. like feel it in them that they're is no other because usually a lot of them sometimes they're comparing them themselves to somebody else and it's just endless and i think the biggest thing about jealousy is always realizing that no matter what you're doing and how much you're killing it in life and there's always going to be somebody else out there who is doing better than you and that's the genuine truth and i think once you kind of accept that and uh be genuinely happy for people and their own success it helps you appreciate your own success a little bit more and it kind of rubs off onto you in a good way but i think a lot of times people i don't know i've witnessed in like the whole kind of social media group is everyone is just constantly comparing themselves to someone yeah. else i mean i, I and they're I, like oh did you see this what they did i can't believe that they must be making so they must be oh, oh, doing the math in their head trying to calculate how much money that person's making a month I'm like, yeah, that's dope, but like, but it's also kind of a weak thing to bring up. Be like, but are they really happy? Are yeah. they really happy though? You kind of don't want to be that person all the time who's like bringing that up to people, and that's your talking. Point. I don't know. They seem lonely. Yeah. I don't know. Like, <laughs> uh, I, don't know. I mean, they we've... seem happy. Everyone would be like, shut up. No one wants to hear that. But that's what you got to kind of tell yourself. Is like, eh, are they happy? What makes you like? What motivates you? What makes you happy? Um, I guess what motivates. What genuinely motivates me is just like knowing one day I'll have a family oh, well, and I just wanting to be able to like provide for them and making sure that I have enough time for them. Yeah. And like just doing all that, like this. Do you want to be a dad? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Don't do you? Very, very much so. Yeah. 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 Just and, and not saying I, I, I love my dad. My dad was amazing. He did an incredible job and he still is an amazing father, but he was just a really compassionate. He still is a very like compassionate person, really teaches us to chase our curiosity. And I can't wait to do that for my kids. But yeah, that's what motivates me. I'm going to steal this from Andy Grammer. Uh, what's one thing that your dad did raising you that you want to make sure you bring in uh, to your family as a father? And then what's one thing that despite your dad being amazing that you learn from him, maybe something not to do because there's always things our parents done because they learned from their grandparents and it was like 19 fucking whatever. Yeah. Um, and what's one thing that, um, you know, you didn't necessarily got wrong, but you're just like, I think we're going to do a little bit differently just because either times are changed or we recognize that maybe there's a better way of doing it. Um, number one with my dad, uh, of something that I hope to emulate and bring back into like my own state of fatherhood. My dad, uh, would get, get me and my brother really hooked onto podcasts at a very young age. Oh. And from that, I think it really expanded my brother and I's like curiosity and what we found really interesting. Like we listened to This American Life by Ira Glass when I was like in sixth grade all the time. And I really looked forward to that, listening to those podcasts on while he was dropping us off at school and us talking about it and us looking forward to the next one and talking about it, going and seeing podcast shows, which is something usually like a normal si uh, kid in sixth grade isn't really into, but it became a really great like creative bond I had with me, my brother and my dad. Um, so I hope to do something like that, a good kind of creative bonding thing that kind of that curiosity of listening to a podcast, learning how to think critically just transcends into everything else you do in life. So that's what I would do that one like that's great cultivating yeah. creativity and curiosity and sharing it you know um you know within our relationship um something that i would do differently yeah hmm i guess like i still try to practice it like really kind of controlling my anger and by no means was my dad like sure. an angry person never angry towards me really ever i mean i was a little shit at times but i mean who isn't but my dad it would be like oh if you're like repairing a sink or something or like the cabinet you know latch is broken and you're fixing it your dad's just like cursing and getting so <laughs> angry and you have those moments of like jesus what's wrong like those kind of moments i ne i hope i can like always maintain my cool a little bit better kid, about yeah. insignificant things in front of my kids because i catch myself doing it a lot like Patricia and I were in bed the other day and like the phone charger behind the bed like got loose and, uh, and I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, this is ridiculous. And like, I'm getting this angry about something so insignificant, but usually I'm just projecting 
that anger from something else that happened earlier in the day. And then what was the third one? Just those two. Oh, I thought there was I mean, three. unless you have more. No, I think that's what I would do. If, just try to keep my cool, be a little bit more Zen kind of a dad. I like that. Yeah. I, I some one thing I think about too, because like obviously I'm, I'm not a dad yet. I still hope to be. Um, I'm older uh, now, and 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 certainly older than I thought I would be when I like I, you know my parents had me at like 22, right? So, and I guess I, you know I always try to be grateful for how things played out. But I think like I think I always would have been a good dad, right? Like I had great parents and great values, but I always think to myself especially lately, I guess I, you know, and I'm still not a father, so I don't know if I'll ever be lucky enough to be one, but I've realized just how much better of a father I'll be now than if I say I had a kid at 23, 24 or 25 or 26. And I just feel like all the things I got wrong in my own relationships or friendships or how I handled stress and adversity or how I was as a brother that I'm like, I could have done things differently. And it's just like, we, and again, I love my parents so much and I had such a great uh, upbringing and they were so fantastic. But like, it's kind of crazy to me when I think about it, how, you know, we become parents at, I guess, any age. And especially back in the day, it was more normal. And it still is to a certain degree to like have kids in your 20s. It's just like how little we don't know about life or ourselves. And yet we're like responsible for like teaching these humans that we created about life. And it's just like, I guess I just try to be thankful. It's just like, oh, well, I'm not a dad yet. And I still hope to be, but now I guess I'm grateful. I haven't had one yet because of, I think about if I was honest, how I would have talked to my kid if they did something wrong or how I would sit down with them or lecture them. And instead of like, I think I would have honestly like belittled my kid more than I should have when I was younger, thinking I was going to be like a tough coach or something. Yeah. You know, like I, I responded well to tough coaching, but there's a time and a place and I don't feel like I really knew when to turn it on and off. And I, I like something I've recognized about myself and that I, I like I'm grateful for is that like, I feel like, uh, I will be much more empathetic to my kids first before I try to like teach them a tough lesson. Yeah. And I don't, you know, and I don't know. Just, yeah, you you really were talking to like, me think about that. Emotionally validate them, you know, make sure that they're heard and they're seen. And uh, yeah, like I love, I love like parenting TikTok. Like I don't even have kids and I get suggested these TikToks of just like parents <laughs> sitting down with their kid when they're having a tantrum and just like slowly calming them down. It's just like magic and fascinating. I love that. Oh, but I haven't got on parenting TikTok. It's Rush We're TikTok. talking about it. You're yeah, you've been on Rush parenting TikTok? I love parenting TikTok. Oh, it's we should. So yes. It fills your heart up. Uh -huh. I've been on Rush TikTok, Alabama Rush TikTok. <laughs> oh my God, are we Russian Zeta? It's midnight. <laughs> oh, yes, Zeta. What is it? The O-O-T outfit of the- O-O-T-D. O-O-T-D. My, my earrings are from Mod Cloth, or I don't even know if they have earrings. My dress is from Anthropology. My shoes <laughs> are you? from- It was all over TikTok over the yeah. weekend, well, so I, was I went so on. so confused when it was going on. I'm like, what is going on? Because everybody was making these TikToks about rushing in the sorority. Um, but is it over now? Or do you think it's going to continue? Well, like, no, it's just a week, but... Right. Well, then I found out that, like, there, apparently there's, like, this... Like, an overarching, like, group of, like, advice, you know, and they, like, got some TikTokers banned or something because it almost was, like, they didn't like that, like... It was getting out in the wild. Uh, it's showing, yeah. yeah. Also, like, about. then you learn that they have a very problematic well, past. No, it, it totally. was It was segregated up until, yeah. like, 2013, wild. which is kind of wild and fucked up. Um, it's, it's a, it, it was a bizarre uh, thing. And then, like, yeah, there was this... <laughs> and then you're, like, you start rooting for people yeah. because you realize they're all trying out. And there was this, like, one young lady who very eccentric very like elaborate outfit and that was just like i want her to get in because i could see someone like teasing her or, right. or picking on her and i don't even know who this person is and i'm just like i'm rooting for the underdog well, the uh, best, i saw one and someone i don't know if it was like the mario i don't know what like video game it was but it was like the choose your fighter and it like took all of them <laughs> and then they all have their middle names so it was like mckenna grace taylor Fay, <laughs> like going through all of them wait so you did sororities yeah, both of you I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. You did, Amit? Yeah, but I, like my, not I was guessed. in the gay sorority. Uh, <laughs> so okay. even though it's like not official, not in an official capacity, but I feel like that tells you the vibe. And it's my sorority has since disbanded and I do, I'm actually really regretful of participating in Greek life. 
All right. Why? Yeah. It Why? seems well now I feel like it's hitting this whole new wave. At first people were deleting their fraternities and sororities on their resumes. And now I don't know. I feel like well, people are getting all excited about it. It's specifically like Alabama TikTok. And I think obviously the South has a the history is complicated, problematic, but also they take a, a, a lot of pride in their history. And so I think in the South, it's still a, a big deal. I have a question. So when they open up those cards and they get their bids, yeah. right? Um, I know nothing about how much. Okay, you know, you know what I'm talking about, though, when they I open, don't they know. open up the card and then it says, oh, no. CTA. The only thing like, I know about that is the movie Social Network where the Phoenix, oh, the like Phoenix. that's all I know about Greek life. from the Phoenix. Yeah. Um, but no, go ahead. What oh, was your question? So, but I'm curious. So when they open up those and they're always screaming, they're so excited. What happens to the people who don't get picked or they don't get the sorority they want? Yeah. So at least at Northwestern, if you went to all the parties and you still had, you know, anywhere between one and three houses on prep night the night before, you're guaranteed a bid from at least one of them. So you're going to get a card, but you sometimes get the house you don't want. So each sorority, so like I was an A fee, we would have a few girls the one go, to be. like mm, yeah. we'd have a few girls like station. And I think each house would send a few like representatives to go to where they open the cards to comfort the girls who were like sobbing. Like what, like people show up at your door like- No, like, like, they, like everyone opened it war, together and they go, and they'd we they'd like, have something to tell you. Yeah, well, if they were really upset, they'd like comfort them, like get them clean. See, I wanna yeah. see that. Yeah. I wanna see that. Show me those moments i want to create the greek life for, for sorority or fraternity of all the people who don't get in and then be the best house bunny house bunny what is that or what? snow the white movie, or the movie house bunny have you not seen the movie house bunny no. sydney white that was the eyes are one. the nipple of the face I have no idea what natalie your girlfriend's name's <laughs> natalie you've never been like natalie go this hey when you go iconic, and see when Aaron you go Harris see natalie movie. today just see her and go natalie Okay. That's in House Buddy, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. And the what? The premise is they literally started a fraternity. So it's about, so Anna Ferris plays a how, like the bunny, a oh, Playboy Anna mansion Ferris, who gets okay. kicked out. And so she has nowhere to go. And so she finds this like misfit sorority. And her whole goal is to help them cultivate membership before their house gets foreclosed. Emma Stone's in it. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Okay. Natalie. <laughs> <Not only. laughs> Natalie got me on uh, the Megan Fox. At, what's a... Uh, Jennifer's body. Yes, I watched like that Natalie's with Patricia for the yeah. first time a month ago. She, I think, had seen it when she was younger. It kind of holds up, though. It's Natalie's one of Natalie's favorite movies. The director of Juno. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Di Diablo something. Diablo Cody. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right. What, what do we got, Matt? We got a, a game. We're gonna wrap things up with. It's real simple. It's a lot of fun. It's called Do You Know Me. Uh, we're just gonna ask questions. Oh. Does Matt this? Has Matt ever done that? And you are gonna answer these questions. Uh, you're welcome to just simply give the answer. Anecdotal stories are welcomed, but not expected. And okay. away we go. Do you know me with Matt King? Did Matt cook at home more? Does Matt? Did Matt? Oh, this week. Did Matt cook at home more than ordering this week? Oh, this week has been nothing but ordering, but I have been getting better. Do you I, like I've been to doing cook? some meal prep? What, what do you mean? No, but like I've been really cooking at home okay. and like prepping What's your my go -to? meals. Um, I just get a slow cooker and get a bunch of chicken, add some salsa, season it up, let that cook for on low for like six hours, shred it up, and then just turn those into like tacos, rice bowls. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Some little eggs in the morning. And is that like a week long meal then? No, not a week long meal. Just like kind of afternoon. If you're ordering twice a day, let's get that adds up. Would Matt give up his phone? for a week for a thousand dollars raises things <laughs> uh you know what yeah i would because would i think do it, it would be so bucks? nice to not have my phone like actually that sounds great like because like we work in like this social media internet world every time we pick up our phone like getting on instagram is kind of work yeah are you addicted to your phone um no not really You're not actually good for you i'm I not am. that it's not that bad i'm addicted to tiktok when i'm on it yeah but like my phone itself i love being off of do you it. have a an addiction of any kind oh uh, what am i addicted to yeah right now i'm addicted to halloween villages <laughs> you know christmas villages y'all like <laughs> tiny christmas villages uh -huh. i'm into halloween villages i i mean i stayed up 
like not almost all night watching videos of people making them i drove down to san diego yesterday and drove back and i spent over a thousand dollars on tiny spooky villages my entire car right now i'm not kidding you is filled with them this is that's my new addiction this right is now. Is it, Halloween's your favorite holiday? No, it's not. Christmas is my favorite. The thing is, I went above and beyond making my Christmas village last year, and then I walked into Michael's the other day and saw a spooky village, and <laughs> it just started going you... off in my head. And dude, the spooky, the spooky village, oh man, God. it is a different game. It's more expensive. <laughs> These are like, like some top level pieces man do you well, dress up for halloween lights involved yes do you dress up for uh, you big halloween uh, costume guy yeah <laughs> sure i actually should plan a lot more this year halloween always happens like so last minute and i'm like shit i need yeah. a costume and then you're running a party city and the line is out the door and you're screwed but i'll, I'll try to be better that's my addiction <laughs> does matt know who wrote the great gatsby f scott fitzgerald no i didn't know you didn't know <laughs> You know, I didn't. I'm oh, just going to be right. totally honest. Or was it Zelda Fitzgerald? <laughs> right. Who knows? Either Everyone way. said Zelda was really the writer behind I, F. Scott. No idea who either of those people are. Oh, my God. Really? Nicholas. Well, why are you guys looking at me with such disgust? I can't know because everything. I feel like you're a very cultured person, and that would also yeah. just come right off the and top I'm, of your head. I can comfortably I feel like you know a lot admit of stuff. my ignorance with life. I mean, that's yeah. like... Like the Great Gatsby, though, that's like the yeah, I understand. You give a mouse yeah. a cookie, but for like high school books, uh, I can't that's wait. Like the, is, is someone gonna come after me? Like people came after Katie for not naming four countries in Africa. Anyways, no. it was a whole thing. No. Um, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I can't know everything. <laughs> Has Matt ever been cheated on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Do you want to elaborate or just want to leave it and move? I'll on? leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> Same, buddy. Yeah, I've been there. Does Matt know three of their friends' birthdays by heart? Oh boy. Friends? You you should know this. Wow. I know I only know my family and like Patricia. You don't really? know like childhood friends, like the yeah. people in elementary oh, school? Actually, yeah. Uh, my friend Addison, I believe, is April 30th. My friend John is there December you you have to go, 12th. Yeah. And then Ooh. Oh, and Aaron Wertheim is April 1st. I like how we called well, that back. Because because all of like the classrooms used to have like the monthly birthdays or like some sort of bulletin board with them. So it always like clicked. Yeah. Joe Joe Tam, who I haven't talked to in, in 25 years, October <laughs> 28th. <Tam's> <laughs> Kelly Tam, his twin sister, my yeah. first girlfriend who broke up with me in the sixth grade by recording an yeah. answer machine after we got home from the Mighty Ducks <laughs> saying, Nick, this, this is, is Kelly, you're dumped. And everyone heard it before me and I cried oh, for no. weeks. Their Never birthday is October twenty eighth. October twenty eighth. <laughs> we should do something that day. Come over and see my spooky village. I'll get your mind off of it, man. But it's funny how we we birthdays, we we childhood, but now we phone numbers and birthdays. Technology has ruined that for us. <laughs> yeah. Can Matt name three people Taylor Swift has dated? Um, Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. Harry Styles. Yeah. 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 And uh, oh boy. John Mayer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Nicely done. There we go. Does Matt bite his fingernails? No. I actually clipped my fingernails this morning. Nicely done. I do. Oh, I bite, really? Yeah, it's disgusting. It's a gross habit. Uh, I will say that uh, I'm quite exceptional. Have you heard of a... Uh... If you looked at my nails, you'd never know. I can great... Yeah, I'm just saying. It's... So you've stopped? No. Wait. No. Oh, but have you heard about the uh, pepper flavored nail polish? That makes you stop biting your nails? Yeah, because it just tastes disgusting every time you do it. Just yeah. a just a thought. <laughs> do you guys look at me differently? What's I mean, the grossest this, thing you do? This has been more enlightening about you than him. I'm a bad <laughs> dude. I'm a bad nose picker when I'm like driving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it's when I'm driving. I also I'm just like. I also do. Go. I've always been a bit of a nose picker. Uh, oh. oh my god! I don't. It's just. Uh, Is there anything else? No. Have you ever tried to get food out of your teeth with a fingernail? Oh, oh yeah, sometimes. Oh, oh yeah. you bite like, the nail and use it as yes. like a toothpick? Yes. Have you ever done that? Yeah. Well, I yeah, have. Like if I kind of. <laughs> oh, all right. I well, actually, I walked into that one. Oh my uh, god, so gross. But I'm not like sitting there doing it all. But like, if I feel something, I'll like. You know, Am I being too honest here? Are there all things we do that are just totally fucking disgusting? That. Absolutely. 
Oh, when I when I go to LAX with my dog, I take her to the service animal like dog pee pad and I lock the door and I pull my pants down and I pee next to her on the pee pad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You do oh not. My god. Oh my god. Well, the line's shorter for the animal one than the people one. <laughs> oh my god, I can't. Oh my god, the visual. Wait, is it oh one god. dog at a time in yeah. the Okay. I honestly thought <laughs> you're gonna be like, oh I eat their food and no, you totally went beyond that line. Maybe well, one time you were like whenever time. Ali says, Has anybody else ever blank? <laughs> the answer is always, always no. <laughs> Do you have to pick up the pee pad or that pee pad stays at the airport and no, you like peed on grass. it? Oh, my God. oh, oh, wait. He's it's like a grass like thing on the floor. It has like a drain. So you like just squat like 100 percent. Those like, dogs are walking in there very confused. Yeah. They go, this is not this was not a dog here. Wow. Happy birthday, Allie. Whew. I got it. Someone needs to steal that and like put it in a movie. Yeah. Like that would be like a yeah. great like opening okay. exposition the to something. The visual is just so magnificent. <laughs> Has uh, Matt? I almost said Allie because I just wanted to learn more. <laughs> if that's if she's just open to sharing that, uh, there must be a lot more. Has Matt ever received a ticket for something that isn't driving related? Um. Oh yeah, my, one of my first weeks I was out in L.A. It was like 4th of July weekend. I went down to Newport and I'm like new to California. I don't know the beach laws. I had a, cu a solo cup, a fireball. Yeah. And then this cop came up to me and was like, what is that? And I said, it's Coke. And he goes, all right, well, I can either test that right now or, and if I do test it, you're paying for the test and getting charged with it. And I said, fine, it's fireball. And he goes, now, why would you lie to a police officer? And I said, That's sir, dick. I'm new here. I, I don't know. And he wrote the ticket. And I had it. I still have it to this day. And then he went to the next group and started doing the same thing to them. And someone mouthed him off and he arrested them. But I was really kind of polite. I lied. That guy was on a mission. But I never got I never got charged. Never got charged. Because I think I was polite and he arrested the other person. He filled his quota for the day. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Politeness always works. Has Matt ever accidentally sent an inappropriate text or email to the wrong person? No. I actually have not, but people have accidentally texted me many times. Has Matt ever named their car? Uh, yes. I yeah, I named my new car too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I only named my Big first blue. car. What is what was the old one? What's the new one? Uh, the actually, I didn't name really the old one. The my first, I don't. Know, I used to have a Kia Soul. I used to have a black Kia Soul, and I named it Aretha. Thought it was a very oh. soulful name. <laughs> And then uh, now I have a Land Rover Defender. It's like blue. And so I call it Big Blue. It's like a Vampire Weekend song. It's one of my favorites. So. My first car was named Jose. Oh. Because I bought it from a priest who was German and his name was Joseph. But he was very popular in the, in, in the Puerto Rican community. And I had a sticker of the priest and my windshield. And it said, uh, Father Jose Ketnik. And you kept it. It was just on the on the screen, and I just left it up there. And my friends just started. We just called it Jose. <laughs> I love it. It was a 1980 orange Toyota uh, Tercel hatchback. Whoa! I, I honestly like a pr knowing how like I wish I would have never like got rid of it or sold it. I think you could find it. No, it's been junked. It's like, oh, you've already like, looked into it. I just took it to a junk art and they oh. crushed it. Has Matt ever been fired from a job? Uh, yes, I got fired from Uncle Julio's. Um, clocked into work. This restaurant hadn't opened. We were rolling silverware, getting ready for the day. I was also a guest speaker at the University of North Texas during that time. And they called me while I was rolling silverware and like, where are you? You were supposed to come speak to a bunch of kids today. And I answered. I went outside on the patio and I answered the phone while I was on the job. They fired you. And then, well, he, he didn't really fire me. He just brought me into his office and asked me a bunch of questions to get me to fire myself. So he's like, so what happened yesterday? Did you think you should have been doing that? So do you think you really need to be working here? Do you want to work here? Do you think it's best you leave right now? And I was like, okay, I guess I'm fired. Well, I he guess never said you're fired, but it made me fire My guess myself. is he's still working there and you're here now. Hey, all respect to Uncle Julio. Still visit there. Uh, Matt. What a pleasure. Nick, this was great. Thank you for coming. Uh, Thank you for having me. Where can the people find you? You can find me on Instagram at Matt R. King. I also have two podcasts, Hoot and a Half. 
with Matt King, me, and I interview a bunch of other people. I have an episode out with Nick as well. I think that's coming out in a few days, but by the time this comes out, it will already be out. So check it out. And then I'm also on the podcast Zane and Heath Unfiltered, which is on YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, same as Hoot and a Half. And uh, yeah, follow me on Instagram. You can follow me on Twitter. I don't really tweet that much. And book me on Cameo if you want to as well. Great. All Happy right. birthday. Thank you, buddy. Matt, we can't uh, thank you enough. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. As always, don't forget to subscribe, rate us five stars, all that fun stuff. Send in your questions at asknick at castmedia.com. Cast with a K for Ask Nick episodes that take place on Monday. And if you're uh, tuning in just to hear uh, Matt, uh, give us a listen. Uh, we do a bunch of relationship and dating stuff on Mondays with people telling their stories. And if you like watching The Bachelor, we crap The Bachelor on Tuesday. And then we also talk to fun and interesting people and experts like Matt himself on Wednesday. <laughs> Can't thank you enough. See you on Monday. Hey guys, thanks for watching, but before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss any future videos like our Monday's Ask Nick for your favorite relationship stories and advice, and our Tuesday Bachelor Recaps. See you next time.